Traveling, it leaves you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller. Traveling, it offers you a hundred roads to adventure, and gives your heart wings. I have indeed, praise be to God, attained my desire in this world, which was to travel through the earth, and I have attained in this respect what no other person has attained to my knowledge. Their women are of surpassing beauty, and are shown more respect than a man. These people are Muslims, punctilious in observing the hours of prayer, studying the books of law, and memorizing the Quran, yet their women show no bashfulness before men and do not veil themselves, though they are assiduous in attending prayers, any man who wishes to marry one of them may do so, but they do not travel with their husbands, and, even if one desired to do so, her family would not allow her to go. The women have their friends and companions amongst the men outside their own families. Who lives sees, but who travels sees more. Once there arrived in Delhi some female infidel captives, ten of whom the vizier sent to me. I gave one of them to the man who had brought them. My companion took three young girls, and I do not know what happened to the rest. I arrived at length at Cairo, mother of cities and seat of Pharaoh the tyrant, mistress of broad regions and fruitful lands, boundless in multitude of buildings, peerless in beauty and splendor, the meeting place of comer and goer, the halting place of feeble and mighty, whose throng surges the waves of the sea, and can scarce be contained in her for all her size and capacity. Near the eastern gate of the mosque lie two very big idols of copper connected together by stones. Everyone who comes in and goes out of the mosque treads over them. On the site of this mosque was a bud khana that is an idol house. After the conquest of Delhi it was turned into a mosque. There are a large number of religious establishments, convents, which they call Khan Khas, and the nobles vie with one another in building them. Each of these is set apart for a separate school of Darwishes, mostly Persians, who are men of good education and adepts in the mystical doctrines. Each has a superior and a doorkeeper and their affairs are admirably organized. They have many special customs one of which has to do with their food. The steward of the house comes in the morning to the Darwishes, each of whom indicates what food he desires, and when they assemble for meals, each person is given his bread and soup in a separate dish, none sharing with another. They eat twice a day. They are each given winter clothes and summer clothes, and a monthly allowance of from 20 to 30 dirhams. Every Thursday night they receive sugar cakes, soap to wash their clothes, the price of a bath, and oil for their lamps. These men are celibate, the married men have separate convents. One day I rode in company with Allah al Mulk and arrived at a plain called Tarn at a distance of seven miles from the city. There I saw innumerable stone images and animals, many of which had undergone a change, the original shape being obliterated. Some were reduced to a head, others to a foot and so on. Some of the stones were shaped like grain, wheat, peas, beans and lentils. And there were traces of a house which contained a chamber built of hewn stone the whole of which looked like one solid mass. Upon her was a statue in the form of a man, the only difference being that its head was long, its mouth was towards the side of its face and its hands at its back like a captive's. There were pools of water from which an extremely bad smell came. Some of the walls bore Hindi inscriptions. Allah al mulk told me that the historians assume that on this site there was a big city, most of the inhabitants of which were notorious. They were changed into stone. The petrified human form on the platform in the house mentioned above was that of their king. The house still goes by the name of the king's house. It is presumed that the Hindi inscriptions, which some of the walls bear, give the history of the destruction of the inhabitants of this city. The destruction took place about a thousand years ago.